Hello everyone and welcome back to Anyone Can Learn to Code. In this episode, we'll build an extremely handy reminder program where the user will enter a sort of to-do list and then the program will remind the user to do all of those tasks. And we'll be using some of the important concepts we learned in earlier episodes to make this happen, including loops and if statements. Let's begin. To start with a really limited version of this program, let's allow the user to always enter three tasks to be reminded about. So we'll ask the user to enter a task three times. Let's start with a welcome message. Welcome to the to-do app. Enter three tasks. And because we're having a user do something three times, we're going to use the loop we learned about earlier. 3 dot times do, put an end to end that loop, and in the middle of this loop, we will have a little message to say enter a task, and inside a variable called task, we will get the user's input. Let's try this out. I've called this to do.rb. Okay, enter a task. Mow the lawn, paint neighbor's car, and feed the pig. So that didn't do much, it just allowed the user to enter three tasks, but it doesn't yet remind the user to do them. So let's go back to our code. To make sure the user gets a head start on tackling these tasks, we're going to remind the user to do them right away. Let us add Here's our initial message. And this is where we get stuck. As you can see, each time the loop runs, it's storing the user's input inside this variable called task. But the problem is, each time the user enters something, it overwrites what was previously in the variable. So by the time the user is done, the task variable will only hold the most recently entered task. But we need the task variable to somehow hold all the tasks. So what we need is a way of storing a list of items. We can do that with a special data structure known as... You're the challenger, the fighter Tutashen. I get many challenges every year. But they all die here. Hmm. Well, now, you won't be challenged anymore. Why not? Because you don't know anything about a raise. To Dashen, you're too brash. But I'm not brash. Because without a raise, you can't be a good programmer. Please. An array. An array is essentially a list of items. It can be a list of numbers, it can be a list of strings, and it can be a list of a combination of numbers and strings. In fact, it can be a list of all different types of objects. We will use an array here to store our three tasks, which are all strings, by the way. An array is represented using square brackets. To create a new empty array, we'll use a pair of square brackets with nothing in between. So, we will start with a variable above the loop, called tasks, which will be an empty array, which is signified by these empty square brackets. Now, inside the loop, every time a user enters a task, we need to add that to the array. So we need to change that variable name to tasks, and instead of equals, we use a special double angle brackets to indicate that we're adding something to an array. That is the syntax for adding something to the list of items contained within an array. Now here at the end, we will put these tasks to the terminal screen. Now let us run the program again. Mow the lawn, paint car, 
feed pig. And now it reminds us to do these tasks. Please remember to do the following. Mow the lawn, paint car, and feed pig. And our to-do app is complete. Now let's dig a little bit more into arrays. To do so, we'll use IRB. Let us begin with storing an empty array inside the variable called x. Let us add the number 1 to the array, and then the number 2, and then the number 3. Now let's look at x, and we see it has these square brackets with 1, 2, and 3 separated by commas. Until now, we've been creating empty arrays and adding elements one at a time. However, you can also create a brand new array which starts off by holding a number of items. Let us have an array called z, and we'll put in strings a, b, and c within it. And now this z variable holds an array of a, b, c. Now if you wanted to access a single item from the array, you can do that in the following way. You take the variable that holds your array, followed by square brackets with the number of which item you want to retrieve. So we use z, zero, to get the first item in that array, which is the letter A. Now here's something that you'll have to get used to in computer programming. The first item in an array is not item number one. It's item number zero. The second item is item number one, and the third item is item number two, etc. This can be slightly annoying at first, but you'll get used to it after a while. There's a whole lot more you can do with an arrays, but we'll leave that until next time. In the meantime, keep practicing, and thanks for watching. Anyone can learn to code.